Episode 21 with Marvin Thieu Lim of Mega Global Group. You're listening to Kendrick Loves to Brand, the branding podcast featuring stories and lessons from entrepreneurs and brand builders so you can get inspiration, insights, strategies, and tactics as you create your own game-changing brand. Welcome to the show, Marvin. Thank, Thank you for you. accepting the invite. Uh, before anything else, I'd like to um, you know, turn the floor over to you and ask you to, to give us a short introduction, you know, who is Marvin Lim? Okay. What do you do? So, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Marvin Thieu Lim. Uh, I am the VP for Sales and Marketing for our family business, which is Mega Global Corporation. So, I'm the youngest of five. Um, my sister is also in the company. She handles finance and all the support roles. My other brother, Malcolm, who's an engineer, is also in the company as a VP for operations in our uh, manufacturing plants and uh, fishing uh, area, which is in Zamboanga. So I joined the family business back in 2015. Uh, I graduated from college when, in 2010. So I had a good five years on my own. I initially worked in SM as a management trainee for their malls. Then I eventually got assigned to SM Mall of Asia, working uh, six days a week, even Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays because malls long yeah, hours. Yeah. Right. So really, that's where I got my training from SM. I stayed there for a year only. Then at the same time, I put up my business. So I have a, um, a used, it used to be a used car dealership. Uh, it's called AutoKid. So I put it up with my partner, Kevin, in 2011. So primarily now, AutoKid has grown to over 15 branches, if I'm not mistaken now. Um, we have we started with three employees in 2011. Now we have over 500. Wow. So what we do, we primarily uh, resell trucks. Uh, we are a major distributor of Dongfeng trucks in the Philippines. So we have uh, we we import it from China. We rebuild it here. We're able to build the bodies and we're able to end to end service for your trucking needs, uh, after part service, uh, all, all the trucking requirements that are industry needs we do so I also have a small business called laptop kid I started in 2008 so it's a small shop in Wilson yeah we primarily sell laptops yeah. to people so uh, initially in my younger days I would just yeah we buy from the USA so I would just buy uh, you know post it online uh, sulit pa dati ayos dito in PC <laughs> May wala na kasi mga ibang yun eh. So ngayon medyo Facebook marketplace na yun. Yeah. So I would sell it personally to the people. No? I would uh, like do deals in the back of my car. No? Parang drug deal nga siya eh. Kasi this I do it in the during back. Your, when you were still studying? When I was still studying. So that was really my passion. Kasi I'm really an entrepreneur by heart. I started my, well, was technically first business uh, by selling groceries to our people when I was 13 years old. So I was selling cigarettes, uh, soft drinks, noodles to uh, our fishermen who would buy it in Mako, then sell it to them. That's when I first started. So moving back. Pa. And uh, in high school, uh, my second uh, way of get, earning money was to play Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. So I played okay. a lot of <laughs> online games in high school because I was having fun. At the same time, I was earning money. How were how you earning money? At the tournament? Um, no. Uh, lang, yeah. hindi, hindi <laughs> um, what I love to do in Ragnarok is play, but also I'd love to trade. So what ah. I do, I'd, uh, I'd buy cheap, then sell more expensive. Then eventually, I was accumulated a lot of virtual currency, which is Zenny. In that Zenny, uh, I used to sell, at the time na medyo marami pang, ah, konti pa lang yung Zenny, I think 1,300,000 pesos. Tapos, I, I did that for a good two years at uh, Then eventually, when I, when I stopped doing it, I think naging 1 peso to 1 million. Wow. So nag-devaluate kasi yeah. ang dami ng... <laughs> Uh, server and dami ng uh, hacks or something like that. But uh, that was an uh, no, interesting portion of my life because um, I, I used to play 12 hours a day. Then really just uh, just just to earn money. And uh, I would meet up with people in coffee shops and really exchange uh, actual money for the actual, uh, for the Zenny online, which is interesting. Then uh, you know, my drive really to earn uh, really came from uh, me being a kid, 
kasi my dad was very strict with me he wouldn't give me much allowance and I, I liked a lot of things uh, I wanted to buy my own car I wanted to get this so there's a lot of um, uh, parang pinigilan niya ako sa maraming bagay so that's why I had to strive for myself so basically that's uh, my background and uh, now in 2015 uh, when AutoKid uh, eventually got big enough we started to hire professionals and uh, my, my, my partner also grew so I, I left AutoKid and now I'm more of a strategic partner, meaning I advise them on what to take, where, where to take the company. Because what we did with AutoKid was branding, uh, what you're doing. Uh, that's what I believed in because that's what I saw from our family business. In 2011, we started it in the front yard of my partner's uh, house. We started with three cars, if I'm not mistaken. And then eventually, actually we started in 2010. Pala. Then 2011, when we opened the dealership, we started with the three cars, naging four, naging ten, naging fifteen. Eventually, hindi nakasya sa bahay niya, nagagalit na namin niya. <laughs> so we had to look for, uh, ano, we had to look for a, a location. At the same time, sabi ko, why isn't there a branded used car dealership in yeah. the Philippines? Um, parang someone you can trust. Because the used car industry here is uh, backyard. Yeah, very and, informal. And, yeah, very informal. Anyone can engage yeah. in the used car uh, uh, industry. So what we did, in, in, in sa start pa lang, we branded it, AutoKid. We made a logo, we made key elements of it, we made sure that uh, our company from day one had a mission vision and we stuck to it. And uh, we, we made sure that, uh, that it was uh, easily identifiable to the brand so that people can trust us. Because over time we believe that if you keep on building the brand, the brand will sell itself. So you don't need to really hard sell. But we shifted from used cars to use uh, to surplus trucks back in 2013, 14. So we shifted because our dealership was located in Araneta Avenue. Araneta Avenue is a haven for used yeah. trucks, yeah. surplus trucks. And when we did that, uh, margins were better, complaints were less because these are companies. Eh? And uh, a lot of uh, progress was being made in terms of volume. So what we did initially, we just bought from the auctioneers in Subic and we just sold it here. But eventually, we aspired to become better. We actually went to Japan, put up a company in Japan, bought the trucks from Japan and imported it here in Subic. Uh, in Subic, we're the third largest locator already, meaning we can, uh, after the two major uh, auctioneers, kami yung pinakamalaki. Uh, what we did in Subic naman was we converted all the trucks from right hand to left hand. Kasi kailangan yun eh. So sa Japan yeah. kasi right hand lahat. Yeah. Then we process all the papers and we did all the refurbishments. Then really, uh, in the past few years, since uh, medyo nag-clamp down ang government natin towards surplus trucks. So surplus trucks kasi uh, 10, 20, 25 years. Yeah. So safety, reliability, yun yung medyo nag-clamp down na yung government. So ngayon, from surplus trucks, we no longer sell that anymore. We we sell brand new trucks. Na. Brand new. Okay. So I think the nimbleness and uh, the constant change of what we do in AutoCAD is uh, evident of our youthfulness because our industry, uh, the truck industry, is dominated by old time players. So not, it's not a fashionable industry. No, no kids want to get into it. Yeah. But then it's also an opportunity for Correct. us. So, we believe that what we're doing to that industry is really revolutionizing it, modernizing it. Uh, we have an app that you can browse. Mm-hmm. We have a QRT, quick response team, that can fix your truck in 24 hours. Wow. So, we're outsourcing the whole motor pool of your service, of your business, to us. So, that's what we do for AutoKid. <laughs> nice. Even before Mega. <laughs> okay. So, in 2015, I joined Mega. Then, uh, I started as a van salesman. I knew from day one that I didn't want to be the boss. Hindi naman porke ako yung anak na may ari, I can boss you around. So it was very difficult for me at the start because I didn't know that it was so hard to sell sardines pala. I had to sell sardines to each and every sari-sari store. So it's not like there are 1.2 million sari-sari stores in the Philippines. It's physically impossible to sell <laughs> to all of them. So I started there, then eventually I grew to become a sales manager, then eventually in 2017 I was promoted to finding my position where I am now, VP for sales and marketing. So in a short, well that wasn't really short, but that's the history of what I do. (laughs) So uh, I'm I'm very curious, like what 
with with your path, let's say uh, you mentioned you were always entrepreneurial when, mm. even when you were younger. Growing up in a family business, mm -hmm. which, which is something I can relate to, no? uh, was, was there ever a pressure from your parents that this was always going to be where you'll end up no matter what? Um, yes, um, there was pressure. Parang they already knew at the start that they were molding us to take over for the family business. And uh, I'm lucky enough that I liked it as well. And uh, it, it was, I'm not sure how they designed it because I'm really the sales and marketing guy, meaning I'm the one who likes to talk to other people. Uh, and my sister is more the controller. She likes to control the bagay sa finance. My brother naman, the engineer, mahilig mag tinker with innovation. So I think they really, at a young age, alam na nila rin kung ano yung mga ituturo nila sa atin. And we were just lucky that naturally, we liked what we did. So, but when you were younger, were you exposed to the business? Like, what what oh, was your exposure to the definitely, business? Definitely, I think my dad really works as hard ever since we were young. You know? um, he would bring me to the office, all of us to the office. I think five years old pa lang ako, nasa office na ako eh. So that was one of my main contentions. No? Uh, and during summer classes, during summers, during Saturdays, dati wala na may Sunday work. Eh. Um, Saturdays, we would go to the office full day. So we had we barely had time to play uh, with our friends. Then, you know, I would just sit there, t listen to him talk, and uh, so from time, I would get angry. You know, why do I have to do this? Why do yeah. I have to come here? My friends are playing. Uh, they're enjoying summer camp. They're, yeah. they're enjoying this and that. But then, eventually, uh, when I got to college, I, I, could, I could feel that I had more business acumen than my peers. Baka siguro from all the sitting down with, in yeah. their meetings and seeing their discussions. I gravitated towards talking about business a lot also with my friends and and you know I think that was when I was said ah oh, pala buti na lang ginawa sa akin that game. so the uh, yun napakita ko na uh, ano rin uh, it was beneficial, beneficial. On, on the flip side do you think that you would have ended up where you are sort of you know being an entrepreneur mm. if you didn't grow up in a definitely not uh, I think that sort of culture uh, is cultivated in a young age, uh, really being business minded is cultivated in the family, in the home. And I don't think if uh, I had exposure to that, I would be an entrepreneur or where I am today. Might be somewhere, but not here today. Yeah, or right now. Maybe still on the path to. Yeah, to maybe learn. a career, maybe a professional. I always wanted to be a pilot, so maybe I want to <laughs> become a pilot, if not. <laughs> so, yeah, that really helped. Uh, how about for your own kids? Like, this is something you also see. That kind of upbringing, yung expo early exposure to, to business. Yeah, I've been thinking about that because my I have two kids now, two boys. Uh, he, ju he just turned four and two years old. So I think I will. Uh, I'll expose them to our family business, my businesses as a, at an early age. But I wouldn't uh, impose, impose on them too much because iba na yung bata ngayon, in my opinion. Okay. And uh, now with social media, it's so much easier to get information. So. Siguro more intentional in terms of planning out with him ano yung magiging future niya, what his goals are. So, more detailed, more planned. Kasi when I was a kid, parang salpak lang, bahala ka na yun. Yeah, so, right. more planning. Yung, and I, I saw recently that you were inducted as the president oh, of PANA. Pana. Yeah, so, um, I'm the youngest president of PANA and they got me because I bring in new life and new uh, para maiba rin naman. So it's a big honor for me to lead such an organization because for, for the benefit of like those who are listening who like are not familiar, Pana, okay. Pana is the Philippine Association, Association for National Advertisers. Yeah. So, so it's 62 years this year. So really, it represents uh, the advertisers of the industry. So it represents and gives us a voice in terms of um, how we want advertising to play out because it is a very crucial topic. Uh, advertising shapes the um, uh, the personality or the character of the people, right? So of society in general. So what we advertise, how we advertise, is very crucial to the brands that we have in the market. So it's an or, or association that helps each other out in terms of getting the best practices, um, knowing the right techniques, um, ca catching up or keeping up with digitalization. Um, getting market trends on the future. So it, it's really a community of advertisers that help each other out. So uh, how, do you, how do you manage to balance your time 
uh, between Mega, AutoKid, and even you know, your role, mm. your new role now with Pana? Well, um, we only have so much time, right? Uh, yeah. Siyempre, if I take on a new role, which really, that Pana presidency role, really, I had to think about it because I know if I commit, it would take up a lot of my time. But fortunately enough, um, my people here in Mega, I've already trained them and delegated a lot of tasks to them and empowered them to make decisions on their own. So there are some that I, some tasks that I could let go already and eventually had um, foc- refocus my efforts on the Pan Presidency. And for Autokid, my partners run it well. I have two partners that run it well. So I just, uh, we just call and talk every week. I just show up to the events kung kailangan. Then uh, my laptop kid, my wife, is handling it. So she's overseeing it para at least tuloy-tuloy pa rin. And my other businesses, I have a, a EA. I recently got an EA. So she helps me with my other businesses. More of financing lang rin kasi yun. Okay. Uh, what, what do you think is, I mean, you're still very young, but you're, you're, you're already accomplishing a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just here in Mega, in, you know, but you know, obviously in... in in uh, AutoKid, mm-hmm. a business that you grew with your with your partners, what do you think has been or your secret to success, or or sort of what's what's your parang biggest strength as an entrepreneur? Mm, for me, I don't think that um, success. I'm not successful yet. I'm, I, I always doubt myself, meaning not really doubt, but I always think I can do better. Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to change. I always wanted to do better myself. I kept on. I, I I'm not so hard on myself, but I always think that you need to become better uh, every, each and every day. So I think that's my secret. Uh, especially now, um, when I joined EO this last July, mm-hmm. my life radically changed. Um, I met some people from my dad's uh, Harvard Cup because my dad went to Harvard uh, at the age of 64 and graduated 67. Oh, nice. Then now he's a president of the Harvard Club of the Philippines. So sometimes I'm included in that event for logistics manners and I, I, I help him out. So I met some people there that introduced me to EO. And EO is Entrepreneur's Organization. Yeah. And ever since I joined there, uh, it really changed my life because it put my mindset into a more um, uh, a different gear of learning. Before, I was okay, I just learned seminar dito, seminar dyan. But oh, the, the type of learning and the people you're surrounded with in EO push you to become even better. Parang ikaw, you, 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 uh, bigla na lang your, your, your elevation or your way of thinking, uh, your comparison from other entrepreneurs is uh, on a different level na. So because of that, I studied in uh, Singularity last September. Mm. So Singularity University is uh, ano, parang future tech. Uh, university in Silicon Valley so it teaches you uh, what are the new trends coming in the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years so what, how technology can change uh, the whole society and our life so it's a bit scary if, uh, if, I, if I go into detail that uh, life will change radically fast uh, at the pace that it hasn't been changed in the past forever in the history of mankind anyway so that's about singularity and now, um, next, in a few weeks, I'll be going to LBS, London Business School, to study uh, again. Pero short courses lang on uh, growth. So, because of that EO, I got access to these types of modules. And uh, got, I, I got testimonials from people who have been through these uh, programs. And mapansin mo, that, that, that eagerness to learn from each other is so important. So, I think that's one of my keys to success of course hindi paraman successful pero saan I keep on doing okay. what, what do you consider then um, because what, what I'm hearing from you is this constant you know, parang yearning mm-hmm. for improvement for mm-hmm. growth uh, if you look back at the, the past few years what would you consider to be parang your best achievement so far the past five years my best achievement so far well, of course, I'm very proud of how my personal business uh, grew. Although the latter part, uh, it wasn't me that was growing it anymore. It was my partners. But that seed eventually blossomed and grew to a company that's uh, surprising. Even I get surprised at our size. And I don't know, 500 na pala <laughs> so, parang, uh, so I'm very, uh, I'm very proud of that. And, uh, and now, at my... Uh, the point of my I, I want to do more I want to start more businesses like that so I want to relive my entrepreneurial spirit so that's why 
here in Mega, I'm actually leaving my role as sales and marketing in the coming ah, months. Okay. So I'm going to delve into HR and business development. Because business development is where I think I can fulfill my passion of starting new businesses right. yeah. and hopefully diversifying our family business at the same time. Nice. Um, how about toughest adversity that you've had to deal with? Is, is there a particular incident or, or like a time when you really had a tough like, challenge? Mm, and how did you overcome it? There is a, a lot. Uh, but uh, Siguro one of the one of the major adversities we had was when we launched our tuna brand in 2016. Ah, okay. So our tuna is mega tuna. So it comes in 100% pure tuna, no extenders. And uh, this was our first time to launch a major brand that is outside of sardines. With the exception of our previous team, we launched on canned meat. But ito, this was my first role in terms of playing with the big players. So that was really tough because we there was a lot of issues that we ran against wherein our competitors immediately knew ad our advertising. Our competitors uh, shut down our advertising. Mm -hmm. and that's uh, That challenge immediately helped uh, me. I had to shift my mindset immediately. That's why we joined PANA. We joined PANA back in 2016 because we had issues with the uh, ASC. The Ad Standards yeah. Council, which uh, prevented some of our ads to be played. At that time, we paid for the, ano na, yeah, we paid for course. the airing, we paid for the production. The production tapos yeah, na yung yeah. ad, but we couldn't play it. We had to pull down some of our billboards. So that's when I realized, oh, comp competition is tough. It's uh, if you don't get ahead of the game, if you don't inform yourself, if you don't learn, uh, wala, they're gonna eat you up alive. So yeah. it was a big challenge for us because at then that was 2016. That was only a year and a half into my role or uh, into the family business and there I am uh, up against the major titans yeah, of our of industry and um, we overcame it and um, now we're, we're much more educated although we still have a lot of mistakes and uh, the industry keeps on changing the rules keeps on changing but at least medyo parang nasabak kami kaagad. so that was a big adversity for us now we can launch left and right nice. so we know na, we know how to play the game <laughs> do you ever experience self-doubt um, yes, of course. Uh, I sometimes you I doubt myself of my capabilities. Sometimes all, everything I do weighs on me, and uh, I don't know if kaya ko or hindi. Pero that's why I have a lot of mentors in my life. So because of EO, I have two mentors that helps me with. Uh, who, who are your mentors? Uh, I'm not sure if I can say. Ah, okay, sure. <laughs> not sure if they're comfortable to say. So uh, they're they're pretty, very very professional, very good mentors. And here in Mega, I have. Uh, four consultants. So I have a sales consultant, marketing consultant, uh, I have a single book consultant, HR consultant now, then our support group has the SCM finance. So we, we rely really on these consultants to help us because these consultants that we have, uh, them I can say one is Manolo Escueta. Uh, he used to be the VP for Asia Pacific mm -hmm. Marketing of PNG. Yeah. So yeah. he's very well versed. So he helps us a lot with marketing. So, si sales consultant, si Jet Husaliani, so also from PNG. So, these people are true professionals. Uh, also, one of our major consultants or one of the best that we have is Pet, uh, Pet Bautista. Pet Bautista used to be the president of Kraft and San Miguel Food. So, he helps me, helps our family. And uh, that's wherein I, I, I take refuge in uh, seeking advice from them when I am in doubt of myself. Um, you, you, uh, you mentioned a couple of mentors, but you can't mention their name. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anyone that you look up to in your field or in the field of business? Oh, definitely. Our main competitors is uh, who I look up to and uh, how they've grown their business, how they have um, turned it public and diversified into other uh, businesses, industries, totally uh, away from what their main business was. My competitors are who I look up to and I really admire for a while. Are you like friendly with them? Yeah, we, we know each other. Of course, we're friend. We're friendly competitors. I mean, like <laughs> uh, the, the industry is big enough for all of us and uh, we believe that com competition is needed so that we're always on our toes. We're Correct. always trying to better ourselves. And without competition, you might become laxed and yeah. uh, stagnant. Correct. Um, how about maybe outside the Philippines? Is there anyone that you would 
want to have an opportunity to meet and have let's say a one on one now yeah. it's Simon Sinek ah. I've been watching a lot of his videos, videos. Grabe, yeah. his, uh, his wealth of knowledge and uh, yung lalim niya in terms of what he says is is ast- right. ast- uh, astounding talaga so I want to personally meet him and uh, get to pick his mind and uh, siguro as I go down the road baka may iba pa pero ngayon siya muna nice uh, what is your typical day like? like Mm, typically, uh, I work out in the morning. I try to work out every day in the morning, but usually every other day. Sha. So that's 7.30 to 8, 8.30. Where do you usually work out? At home. At home. So I have trainers that come home. Uh, right. uh, that's what the beauty about the Philippines. It's, uh, <laughs> you can have them come to your house and I need to go to the gym. Because I tried gym memberships. I don't want to hassle because it's too park and everything. Yeah. So I work out at home. Then uh, I come to the office around 9.00. Uh, 9 to 10 I usually do my work alone then 10 onwards I have meetings that with my direct reports then I wind down around 3 to 4 again then I get home at 5.30 to play with the kids yeah, then you know ulit ulit lang then sometimes we have we are, as a marketing company we have a lot of events kasi. so during weekends I'm at the, I'm at the events and that's your uh, w- do you have like a morning routine aside from working out? Like, uh, not necessarily. Um, I'm not that type of. I'm not an organized individual, and I believe now um, I'm learning to embrace my strengths because I I, got, I recently got a coach pala on for my life. So oh, okay. he is a life coach. So we're he's teaching me to focus on my strengths and really not uh, dwell on the weaknesses. No need to change yourself. Yeah. So be who you are. But just realize that you need to use the tools that you have within your capability to maximize your uh, your life. So you know, not, I'm not organized, so I don't have a routine. <laughs> what what pushed you to get uh, a life coach? Well, again, based on my uh, like constant uh, improvement, constant improvement, and from the people I met in EO, and from my industry exposure, from my colleagues that I meet, um, I met someone who is a coach and also a, a leader like myself of a large FMCG company and they exposed me we, we were just talking one night I met them at a wine event and they they, they, they told me about coaching I'm like oh, ganun pala. So I became interested then I learned about it and now I, I got one then he's helping me a lot which is um, okay to me nice are, are you allowed to say his name? For, yeah for Coach Lippi Lippi <laughs> Coach yeah. Lippi check him out he's pretty yeah. good <laughs> just in case anyone listening wants to, <laughs> yeah. to, to look into that uh, you also mentioned like you have a lot of events though, for, mm. for Mega. Uh, do you mind taking us through like like what are your main product lines? And, oh, sige. And, so, uh, siguro yung, like, do you have endorsers or brand yeah. ambassadors that you can... So our main product is Mega Sardines. So our signature catching to canning within 12 hours is imbibed in our brand. So we launched a brand in 1999. Our company is 45 years today. So we're really a fishing company. Uh, we have 88 fishing vessels in Zamboanga. So uh, our USP for our sardines is that we catch it and can it really fresh. And our technology in our catching boat is unparalleled. Uh, no one has replicated the technology that we put in catching sardines. So this includes a fish pump technology wherein we suck the fish from the sea and it goes into a uh, tank. So that tank maintains at one degree. So the fish um, literally freezes. So, hindi siya nakakaroon ng histamine. So, histamine is yung pangangate, malansa. So, kaya yung ibang sardinas, hindi kasing sariwa kasi they use old fish. They use frozen fish. They use not fresh. So, people don't... We have to educate the yeah. market that sardines is not only sardines. Yeah. I mean, it's a product for the masses. It's the most staple food for the Filipinos. And it's one of the longest standing food. Yeah. Talagang, pag Pilipino ka, for sure you eat sardines. Yeah. And it's a 16, 17 peso can of sardines feeds a family of three to four already. So imagine the impact that we have uh, in the Philippine uh, nutrition. So that's really wha- how we started. A uh, fishing company, we in- interjected a lot of innovation into our techniques and our processes. Even our canning is open to the public. We have certifications that no other canning plant open has. Open to the public meaning that they can go see? Yes. So um, the Sambuanga uh, is a sardine capital yeah. of the Philippines. And usually when um, the city hall has guests, they come to our plant. Because our plants, the cleanest, the, uh, we, we maintain a certain level of standards. 
So that's our main product line. How about your competitors? Are they also open to sharing? not as open as us? Not as open as us. Uh, majority of our competitors have already been in our plants. So, uh, sa kasi we're not. Um, They've also been to your plants. Of course, of course. But you know that they're there. Or? Yeah, we know that because okay. it's not something you can replicate. Uh, if you if you don't have the uh, people, if you don't have the constant uh, drive for innovation, you can't just replicate it. So yeah. we're. Uh, we're confident that oh, sige, pakita namin. Oh, di, hindi nyo naman magagaya. Yeah. So uh, when, when you say the business is 45 years, but you only started branding your own... Yes. Project. So really, in um, the history of that, my dad started in 1972 when he was 25 years old. He officially incorporated the company in 1975. He started fishing with my mom because my mom's family business was into fishing as well. So my dad really saw... Ano ba yung kulang sa fishing company ng mom ko? So he eventually tried it out, dropped out of UP um, because of all the strikes. Then uh, he started with one fishing boat. Then he himself went out and uh, Your he learned the process. Mismo. Yeah, my dad wow. <laughs> He started with one, with a loan from his uh, father also. Wow. So eventually he grew it to 88 now, the largest fishing company in the Philippines. So we build our own ships now. So we build also, your own ships. yeah, we build our own ships. We wow. buy ships from Japan, but we also do it in house. So the 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 growth really came from his industrial spirit because talagang he's an uh, engineer. So he likes to tinker, just like my brother likes to tinker, like to likes to innovate. So in '99, um, actually in '95, we moved operations from the Voltas because we were fishing here for the local market to Sambuanga where uh, there was a lot of sardines so initially in 1995 we would fish for the canneries but then syempre yung presyo up and down so my dad was like oh, we should make a canning plant so that we can absorb all the yeah. fish that we catch without the harmful effects of price uh, supply and demand so we put up a canning plant in 97 then started tolling for the major brands. So we were doing all the major brands in the Philippines. Even some rin. of your competitors now? Oh, oh, we were doing them. Ganun rin. Parang pan, uh, pansin ng dad ko. Parang supply and demand. Pataas ba yeah. pa yung It wasn't sustainable. So eventually, he, he started the brand with my sister already on board at uh, 1999. So kami, as a family business with no experience in marketing, went into a FMCG. Ang hirap ng trabaho nila. They really had a hard time the first five years. Because they really had to spend a lot. Then breakthrough came when we got our first endorser, uh, Cesar Montano at the time, and sikat na sikat yung Muruami. Yeah. So it was good timing, uh, good product placement, and uh, okay rin yung advertising. And the uh, USP was from catching to canning, tumunog, tumatak sa tao. So eventually, uh, that's wherein we developed ourselves as a marketing company. And, and, and I'm proud to say in the past five years, in 2015, we were already number one in the market, uh, beating out brands that have been there for 60, 70 years, yeah. heritage brands. Yeah. When you go, when you say, uh, you, when you go to the provinces, when you say, pabili na sardinas, so, yeah. they say a different brand. Parang Colgate, yeah, pabili ng Colgate, yeah. which is toothpaste. So, yeah. ganun ka synonymous yung sardines, and ganun kahirap i- I tanggalin sa mindset ng tao. Are we talking about Lego or 555? Five, five, five? Uh, Youngstown is actually <laughs> Youngstown. one of our major, comp- okay. Uh, okay. major competitors. So, uh, sila talaga they have a heritage brand. Eh. So, it's hard to take that heritage brand away from the consumers. So, in 2015, we grew to become number one. Now, in 2020, we're double digit number one, uh, more than our competitors. So, we're very proud that um, we have changed industry from being a commodity, uh, yeah. sardinas, sardinas lang, now to really become a, you know, a major player. So aside from sardines, what other what other products? So uh, we launched our tuna in 2016. Uh-huh. Um, again, uh, we believe kasi in providing better convenience and uh, value for money for our consumers. And the mere fact that we launched the very first Easy Open Can in the Philippines in 2012. So lahat ng mga produkto, almost karamihan na produkto sa Pilipinas before 2012, hindi Easy Open. Yeah. So we were the first major brand yeah, to launch yeah. Easy Open in 2012. And because of that, everyone else followed tuna, corn, beef, lahat. So, now, we believe in launching products that are beneficial and something different. So, our tuna has no extenders. So, we hindi uh, tulad the major brands and maraming extenders. So, sa amin wala. We also what, have... What are the extenders? I'm just curious. Because I, I eat soy. a lot of tuna. Eh. It's soy. If you look at the label, yeah. pag may soy dyan, it's called TVP, Textured Vegetable Protein, aka soy. soy. So, our competitors have over 40% of soy 
because you're talking about like the major brands. The major brands. I, so I was surprised it. also. Actually, <laughs> I was really surprised because I love tuna. Eh. So when you open the can, uh, look at it. Para siyang giniling na kulay brown, light brown. That's not tuna. So there's a lot of extenders that they put. So that's uh, our second major brand. We also have canned vegetables. We launched it in 2017, all in easy open can. So this is canned corn, mushroom, uh, garban sauce, green this peas. This is under the brand. Mega Prime. Prime, Mega Prime. Yeah. So there, uh, we also extended to oyster sauce, uh, sweet chili sauce. Now we have sparkling grape juice, uh, different sauces. So now we're really rapidly expanding our product line because we believe that we already have the network, distribution network to uh, sell it to the public. At the same time, the public trusts our uh, uh, corporate identity already to give them uh, better products. So we're leveraging off of that. So we're, we also have mackerel, we have bottled sardines. Um, and, and all of these, um, we believe in the major power of using endorsers to promote the brand. So. Uh, Piolo Pascual is our long-time uh, endorser for our Mega Sardines line. Uh, Marian Rivera is our endorser for Mega Prime. Mega Prime. So now the age has shifted from using endorsers to influencers. Yeah. So now we have a lot of influencers under our belt uh, for the Mega Tuna line. So who are, who are some of the influencers that you work with now? Well, um, they're going to launch it. Palang. Ah, okay, okay, we've okay. worked with Baninay, I think, before. Uh, Melissa Gohing. Um, uh, know, yeah. Yeah, I do, if you know some yeah. of the influencers, um, Mimiya, Mimiya. <laughs> use Mimiya. So really, that's the uh, that's uh, that's the thing to do now to use these micro or macro influencers to make sure that their uh, following uh, is uh, ano eh, authenticity. Ang kailangan niya eh. yeah. Hindi right. masyadong hard sell. Eh. Sure. So that's what we're learning. I have a very young group of marketers, kasi. So that's what we're learning. We need to change the mindset of how we market. Yeah, I, I think that's also a challenge given that like you advertise like nationwide, mm. right? so you you do need the the star power of somebody yes, like Piolo, yes, Maria. Yes, oh. But then at the same time, given that I, I think the the one of the biggest change in marketing is there's not one parang homogeneous na market. Mm. Eh. Mm-hmm. So you have to target like yes. subsets, and maybe yes. this this audience will. You know, yes. resonate with somebody like Mimi, yeah, or you know, so it's, that's where the, in the so that's influencers the, come that's in. That's the beauty of a marketing, and that's why I love marketing because there's so many things that you can do, and uh, the creativity really pours out in terms of how you execute, what partner to get, and uh, the awards and the actual effects are the gratifying things afterwards. Yeah. So, if you see that market share has increased, if you see that you're getting awards for your projects, yun yung mga masarap na feeling kasi. Uh, as a marketing company, I believe we're one of the you know, strongest, the most nimble in terms of activities that we do uh, for a local company, brand. Yeah. Uh, kasi usually, kalaban rin multinationals. Magaling na talaga, sophisticated na sila. But for a local brand, I think, medyo magaling yung marketing team na. And you also mentioned earlier that uh, you're looking to move into business development. Mm. Uh, like, what what's the vision that you have uh, for Mega in terms of I mean, obviously, you've, you've expanded into other product lines mm-hmm. now. But like, are, are you looking to basically own the whole supermarket shelf? Hindi <laughs> naman. Or, uh, or, or, or uh, like, what, what's the next product line that, that you're looking to get into? Uh, without getting into detail, because it's yeah. uh, of course. trade secrets. But we're expanding all of our lines. Uh, we're actually building a canning plant in Patangas already now. So we're really uh, gearing ourselves to... Um, be a big player in the FMCG market, um, regardless of category. Um, I personally have plans of going public in the next few years. So it really depends on our board and our family if they're open to that because I believe by going public, you share the company with the public and they help us succeed. So it's uh, shared success. Yeah. So that's one of the big initiatives that I want to undertake. Um, then expanding into other industries such as agriculture, uh, we were into layering, shrimp farm, um, different categories or different industries that are allied towards ours. We're going into feeds, so maraming ibat ibang project that we're trying to get into. Nice. So there's a lot to look forward to for Meg. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Uh, how about uh, in terms of 
Well, you you mentioned like all these new canning and investments. But how about you personally? Like, what what would you consider uh, maybe to be sort of like a, a, a your best investment uh, personally in terms of Sigogo gear or equipment that would that helps you do what you do. Gear and equipment? Yeah. My laptop. Because <laughs> uh, I do a lot of work on my laptop, especially when I started my laptop business. I, I used to buy yeah. online on, yeah. from the US. So, parang, uh, I'm very, gadgets are very, very, very crucial to me. So, I think if that answers your question, my laptop is <laughs> the best uh, something investment. I really need. So, uh, we here in Mega, we communicate through Telegram. Mm. And we, okay. As a millennial, uh, I want instant results, instant communication, instant feedback. And we do a lot of our coordination through Telegram. So, uh, emails, if you want it uh, more formal, but if you want it instant, yeah. uh, messaging is very important. Have you tried Slack? Not yet. Uh, yeah. I've heard about it, but we don't want to keep on using too many Different. applications. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard about Slack. I've yeah. heard about Slack. I'm, 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 I'm a very big fan of Slack. Yeah. Uh, ano bang benefit na, I mean, super convenient in terms of you know, may 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 IM siya so you can chat mm. uh, you can also send files uh, then you can create different channels per team or per topic or per project mm. na only the people involved in that project can mm. see that so and then you can also have like a like a, ma- a main channel that you know everyone in the company yeah. have announcement so they buy it then. Uh, there's a free program, although given the size of your company, I'm pretty sure. Maho <laughs> one day palang ubus na yung free yan. Kasi there's like 10,000 messages. Hindi naman mga wala, pero like you won't be able to search for the old. That's one of the things na maganda. Like you can search for. Oh, actually, free, that's old. why we moved from Viber for to, last year to Telegram. Because yeah. Telegram saves all the messages. If Viber doesn't. It's yeah, so correct, hard to correct. search. Oh, sinabi mo to dati. Yeah. <laughs> Hanapin ko muna. With Slack, yeah, same thing. You can do that. And you can also upload files. Mm. You can integrate it with other mga project management software. Oh, talaga. Tingnan talaga, ko nga. Yeah. Oh, I'll look into that. That's uh, that's something because we're really focusing on here in Mega is digitalization and uh, transforming ourselves into uh, to the digital world. Mahirap kasi yun. May call then so parang like ano yeah, I, I look sound, into that I, I sound like an that. agent for Slack <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Slack uh, okay how about best advice that you've ever received as an entrepreneur best advice well I can tell you my advice that I would give okay, <laughs> it's wh- a foolish advice <laughs> what's uh, your advice it's, it's my motto uh, you have to spend more to earn more uh, alam ko baliktad eh uh, Patukan ako ng tatay ko pag hindi nagalitin. <laughs> Kasi siya, you have to save, save, save. Yeah. Uh, for me, that mindset is uh, passe. Uh, for me, you have to spend so that you you are you are pushed to earn even more. Kasi if you don't, you, you just keep on earning and you don't spend it. You don't enjoy it. Anong drive mo to earn more in the future? So ako, balik that. I spend it. So uh, para at least, uh, I need to earn this. I need to earn this. So that's my you know, advice. For the advice that people gave me, naman, um, ah, my dad's advice to me ever since I was a kid. Uh, character is the number one most important thing. So your character towards other business people, towards your family, is you have to take care of your name. So that's the best advice that I got. So paying banks on time, paying creditors on time, being a man of your word is very important in your business. We're, we're heading towards the, the latter part of the show now. There mm-hmm. are three questions that I always ask okay. all my guests. So this is relating to legacy. Um, knowing everything that you know now, uh, this is to, uh, 2020, everything that you know from the past years of all the experience you have, if you went back in time, um, Sigur, let's go all the way back to when you started AutoKid. Mm-hmm. Para mas malayo layo. So, mga ten, almost 10 years mm. ago, di ba? Uh, and then, let's say you had just a quick minute lang to speak to Marvin from 10 years ago. What would you say to yourself? Mm, I'd tell him to learn as fast as I can, as early as I can. Um, one of my regrets is really learning too late. You know? um, I wasn't a studious guy. Uh, I didn't like to study, but studying correctly and knowing what type or uh, what topics to study is very important. So, I would I would have tell I uh, told him to learn quicker, and learn faster, so that you can earn faster too. <laughs> yes. Do you think the younger Marvin would listen to the advice? 
No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That time, no. <laughs> That's the ironic thing. Uh, so. <laughs> and yun talaga. Uh, okay, second question. Well, what else are you looking to accomplish over the next days? You mentioned kanina yung going public. Yeah. So, but uh, so aside from that, if you want to speak more to that, uh, what what else are you looking to accomplish? Mm, I'm looking not only, well, going public is a major thrust. No? Yeah. A lot of things have to change internally and externally. So that's one of my major goals to do. Uh, hopefully, I'm able to do it. But aside from that, diversification into other businesses is very important. Launching new brands is very important. Um, personally, launching new businesses is also very important for me because I like, I'm an entrepreneur by heart. I like to create something of value that's not there. Um, what I don't like to do is operating. I don't like operations, meaning day to day, I don't like doing it. So again, going back to the strengths uh, that I have, I have to leverage on that. And hopefully set up a good team that will help me operate everything I start. Kasi sayang naman, isa start mo, hindi ba naman tatapos. Correct, yeah. So it has to be through and through. So um, also, um, the next few years, hopefully all that I'm learning, I put into action. Kasi may mga iba, aral lang ng aral, Correct. wala naman action ginagawa. Correct. Iba naman, action lang ng action, <laughs> hindi naman nag-aaral. So the balance, the balance. Okay. So before I ask the final question, mm-hmm. where, where can people follow you? Where can people follow your brands? Uh, you can Online. Know, personally, I'm not an influencer. <laughs> you can follow my IG. <laughs> uh, my brands, uh, we have Facebook pages, uh, Mega Global, uh, mm-hmm. Mega Sardines, Mega Tuna. You can follow them on Facebook, IG. So, yeah, basically, that's it. Okay, so uh, bef- before I ask the final question again, I uh, just want to acknowledge you and thank you for your yeah. time. Uh, and, you know, this is uh, this is actually our first time meeting. So, mm-hmm. uh, But I've, I've I followed I followed you also online uh, since I think one of your partners reached out to me ah, uh, yeah, Eric. to say na, ano, um, yeah, that you're really inspirational. Mm-hmm. So uh, this has been really uh, <laughs> a, 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 for me at least it's very it's very inspirational for me uh, coming also from a background of uh, you know, having a family business yeah. that I'm that I'm not involved in. Mm, okay. So uh, it's inspiring to me to see somebody like you going into the family business and really enjoy it and really help yeah, you grow it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, d- d- I, I just wanted to acknowledge you for that. Uh, so the final question, how do you, Marvin T. Lim, want to be remembered? Well, I want to be remembered um, for being a fun leader. Uh, that's my, I think, my USP to the world. I like to do things uh, with fun. I like, I like it when people have fun. And when you interject fun into the workplace, it doesn't become work all of a sudden. It becomes fun. So we try to do things in a fun manner. And serious but fun. So that's how I want to be fun leader. Nice. And on that note, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kendrick. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review the show on iTunes. It will help more people discover the show. You can also share a screen cap of the show on your social media accounts. Make sure to tag me and let me know which part of the episode you like or didn't like. All feedback is certainly welcome, so feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Kendrick Ko to let me know what topics you'd like to be covered next and who you want to hear or learn from in future episodes. Until next time, do the work you want to see done because life's too short to not be creating your life's work.